everyone. Luke, Susan, Outdoor Gear Review. We are in Colorado. And everyone, you have to check this place out. It is absolutely gorgeous. I can't believe that we are here. I've had like two hours of sleep in the last couple of days. So I'm a little bit slow minded. So excuse me if I say anything dumb, but wow. What do you think about this, Susie? It's amazing. We were talking earlier that it's quite an adventure in itself getting to Colorado because we live in North Carolina on the eastern part of the United States and traveling to Colorado is, is not easy. Um, we did fly, there was crazy weather, so the flight was longer than it was supposed to be. It's an entire day of traveling just to get here. We also live hours away from the closest airport, but it's so surreal to be here and just gonna take it all in and enjoy every minute, no matter how tired we are or how funny we might feel. <laughs> <laughs> so before I tell you all where we are at, check out the scenery. And we are going up there. So the trail we are doing is Baker Gulch to Bowen Gulch. We are currently inside Rocky Mountain National Park, but shortly we will be exiting the park and we're doing the loop trail. We're looking at about 19 miles with our mileage. As Susan said there, we are leaving the Rocky National Park. We are entering the Never Summer Wilderness. I love that name. The Indians used to call this in the translation, never no summer. And that's because it's cold, it's stormy. There's locations where there's snow on the ground year round. And hopefully we should be away from the masses, from the people for our three days. Now with this adventure, everyone, since this is a loop, there's two ways of going about this trail. We are doing this counterclockwise. From what I hear, this is the easiest way to go. No matter what, this trail is not easy. This is rated as very difficult, strenuous. Along the way, I believe there are 28 water crossings, multiple alpine lakes, and tomorrow we will summit two mountain passes. The temperature this morning is roughly 37 degrees Fahrenheit. There's frost all over the place, but it's warming up very quickly. The sun is already in the sky. My good friend Bob, Now, when it comes to elevation, we are at roughly 9,000 feet, something or other. We will be camping out above the tree line tonight at roughly 11,300 feet. That, of course, is as long as the weather is good. If it turns bad, there is a second lake that is wooded that we can camp at. Storms are not in the forecast today, but they are in the forecast for tomorrow and Wednesday. Now this is black bear country, plenty of those, but they're not really my concern. We are in moose country, and that would be what we would need to watch out for. Definitely. Are the moose. You stand your ground with a black bear. You don't stand your ground with a moose. You're not going to scare it off. You're not going to intimidate it. We made it, Susie. Yes. What do you think about this so far? Yeah, it's beautiful. It really is. It really is. Now for this trail, you do have to permit. Luckily, it's self-sign right over here. So you don't have to worry about reservations and whatnot. You could simply self-sign up. So right here, we have a map of our adventure. We started here at the parking lot. Now essentially, we are going counterclockwise. We're gonna head up here to Parika Lake. That's where we're going to camp the first night. The next day, we have two passes to head over to Bowen Lake. Wow, check out this cool tree, love. <laughs> now one cool aspect to the Never Summer Wilderness is that dispersed camping is allowed. So you can camp anywhere you want to. Of course, you need to follow good common sense 
such as staying away from the water's edge at the lakes and so on. But yeah, you can camp anywhere you want. As far as our travels to get here to this point, here's a little bit of a flashback of what we've been through and where we've been. That is moose poop. Susie, what do you think about a water break? Yeah. When it comes to elevation, some people are more susceptible to it than others. Elevation sickness is essentially what I'm talking about here. Now, the key to preventing elevation sickness for everyone is drinking lots and lots of water. That's right, as soon as you get dehydrated, you will bring on all the symptoms of elevation, altitude sickness, and it's terrible. If you remember, Luke and I were in Colorado two years ago, and I definitely suffered from a little bit of altitude sickness, and I really believe a lot of it was to do with getting dehydrated. And with that trip, everything turned out just fine. We got some rest, got some water, and it was a great adventure. So take it slow, don't push yourself too hard, especially on those hot days. But remember, drink a ton of water. Also, it makes your pack lighter. <laughs> mm -hmm. And if we eat, his pack will get lighter. He has all the food and it's really heavy. Yeah, I have the uh, your sack in here, loaded up with three days worth of food. It weighs a ton. We may be eating like kings and queens. We have like breakfast, snack, lunch, snack, dinner, dessert. Yeah, dessert. <laughs> Don't forget your dessert. And um, we may have brought some booze. And coffee. I don't see it, but I heard it. I'm pretty sure there's a moose up there. I heard a pretty sizable thump. So here's a little bit of a pro tip for you all. When it comes to socks, if you plan on wearing shorts or maybe zip off pants, wear longer socks that you can roll over the top of your shoes and they act as gaiters so dirt Debris, rocks, do not get in your shoes and cause blisters. I tell you everybody, it is so quiet, so peaceful here. This is amazing. It is very quiet. Yeah. There were numerous cars in the parking lot, but we've seen nobody. We've seen no one except for some mosquitoes and they're pretty big out here. Mm -hmm. We are covered, well, our clothes are covered in pomethrin. Our bodies are covered in DEET, 100% DEET. Don't play any games with these mosquitoes. 
they laugh at that organic stuff. <laughs> They'll laugh at it. They do, but I, I keep wanting to try it. I'm like, <laughs> this one's gonna work this time. Every single one has burned us. They never work. Literally, y'all burned him. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what she's talking about. Not literally. <laughs> <laughs> That's the most me thing you've ever said. <laughs> It looks like the bridge is out, we have to turn back. There's no way we're making it across that. Adventure's over. Done. Done. Bye. Bye, Concord, Colorado. <laughs> yes. So we are a couple of miles in, still have a good ways to go before we get above the tree line, but we're making progress. It is beautiful. Now in the 1800s, Bowen Mountain was mined. There was a silver and copper mine up there known as the Wolverine Mine, and you can actually still get to it. I've looked into this some because I considered going to it. I found <laughs> multiple maps, different locations that state where this thing is at. Nothing very reliable and I've never seen anybody post a picture of it. So... Nobody's made it there then? Oh uh, yeah, I don't know. Go Susie. Uphill mode, engage. So guys, we have come upon the boulder field that we'll be crossing over. And look at that snow covered mountain. So, so far the hike has been kind of steady. Not too challenging, a little bit of uphill, but then you're re rewarded with some nice flat areas. I'm doing great, Luke's doing great. We're taking another break to get some more sun protection. Um, Definitely need it. This sun is punishing. With this boulder field, this is a good size one. So we will do our best with navigating it and also finding this trail, staying on the trail. From what I've heard, this can be a little bit hard. I mean, how hard can it be? You know you're not going up. <laughs> you got to go over here somewhere, so we will find out. With the boulder field here, easy navigation, no issues. It's almost noon. We have clouds forming over the mountains. Again, the chance of rain today is just, just about zero, but you never know. We're starting to come across some old mining equipment, some steel. Can't wait to see what else is up here. 
Susie and I have come out here at the perfect time. The wildflowers are in bloom. Whew, it's gorgeous. It's hard not to stop and film each one of them. <laughs> Feels great to be back in the trees. That Colorado sun is very unforgiving. We're still in the woods, but the trees are becoming further apart. More rocks, definitely steeper. What do you think, Susie? Definitely steeper. Yeah. I'm keeping an eye on the clouds here. They're definitely coming in, but nothing imposing yet. I do have an emergency shelter with me, a tarp that is fully stringed out. If a storm comes upon us, I can string it up. We can sit under it. We'll be in good shape. Wow. So we just passed a hiker back there. He said he's been up here for about four days. He said he's ready to get off of these mountains. He says it's been snowing up here. <laughs> Cold. He said he's doing better with every step towards the car. So, ran into another hiker coming down, and he told me about a sweet spot to camp at. So, we will definitely check that out if at all possible. Now, so far, we haven't seen any moose. Plenty of moose tracks are everywhere. Lots of moose scat. All right, so check this out, everyone. This is pretty cool. 3.4 miles in, and we have made it to the Grand Ditch. Check this thing out. Construction of this ditch began in 1890, and it was completed in 1936. It goes for 15 miles. And essentially, it diverts roughly 40% of the runoff water here in the Never Summer Mountains down to the plains for like farmers crops and so on. Oh, I'm ready for a break. That's a slow, slow three and a half miles right there. Dang, that is good. Mm -hmm. After lunch here, we have roughly two miles to go. About one and a half miles for the small lake. As far as I know, it's unnamed. I don't think it's a named lake. Susie and I were back on the trail again, getting up higher and higher. It's getting windy. Thank goodness. It feels good now, don't it? Yeah, it does. In the shade there, it's almost cold. Susie just said that she feels bad for people who will never see this, but they will because of us. True. That's what we're doing it for. We do these hikes for you all. Let me tell you, it would be easier and quicker to hike this without filming it. <laughs> so much easier. The air is thin. It is thin. <laughs> a little harder to catch your breath. It is. You have to take more breaths to get caught up. Yeah. So Susie and I have a plan now. We are actually going back just a little bit. We are essentially 
between the little unknown lake and Parika Lake. And we saw a fantastic campsite back there. And we are basically going to go back, chill at it, throw up the hammock, just relax, get out of the sun. And then as the sun is going down, we will head up to set up camp at Parika Lake. Uh-oh, you caught me. Hi, Susie. Hi. You look pretty darn comfortable right now. I'm uh, so comfortable. <laughs> this is one of those rewarding things about backpacking, you know? Right. I, I've been looking forward to this since I woke up today. <laughs> I was really nervous about the trek, and it's not been bad at all. You've done so good. You know, but it's very challenging, but this is one of those things that, uh, it's so rewarding. While Susie relaxes, I have a lake to go find. Just remember, you want to do that. Yes, I do. It doesn't look like too many people go out this way. There's not really a defined path. So the question is, will there be a moose out here? Wow. <laughs> That's my big word for the day. Wow. There's no moose, but this is absolutely incredible. There really aren't any words to describe how beautiful this is, so I'm not going to say anything at all. Susie? Yeah? <laughs> have you been sleeping? I don't think so. I don't think I fell asleep, but I did lose a little bit of time. <laughs> <laughs> she is so funny. Isn't Susie the best? We are so glad that she is on this adventure with us. You're not doing it by yourself. <laughs> Heck no. Oh gosh, that's... It's awful, isn't it? This is the worst thing I've ever done to myself. <laughs> <laughs> now, as you all can see here, I'm laying in the hammock, and this looks kind of funky, but this is one way to be very comfortable inside of a hammock. You lay at a diagonal with one leg bent, you can put one hand behind your head and you use the ridge right here. It's perfect. It's like having a pillow. Susie says I can have the hammock for like one more minute. No, I said you could have it the whole time you drink coffee. Because <laughs> I got to sleep. I mean, I got to rest in it. Not, not sleep. sleep. No. No. I got to rest in it earlier. Now it's your turn. Lay back. Thank Take you. some weight off of your shoulders. Uh, I like logs. That's a nice sitting log. So cheers, everybody. Cheers. Wow, isn't that something? Woo. It's overwhelming, isn't it? Yeah, slightly sickening when you get up high and all you can see are these mountains. It's true. What is so amazing about this is that you can essentially go anywhere you want to. You have complete freedom of navigation here and you can disperse camp anywhere. I mean, there's nothing stopping us from just heading up this mountain, going where we want to.
made it to the lake and it is everything that I wanted it to be. It's beautiful. I'm essentially just scouting around looking for a great campsite. There's one good one back there, but I want to see what else I can find. I've discovered numerous spots that are pretty dang awesome. You know, the thing is, there is no bad spot. It is all awesome. Hey, Marmot. See him? Marmot, destroyer of tents and backpacks, trekking poles. Never set your equipment down when those guys are nearby because they'll destroy it. They really will. <laughs> That makes me not want to go stay over there. They will eat a hole in your tent. They'll eat the handles of your trekking poles. They'll eat the straps off of your backpack. Our shelter for the night has been set up. This is a new product that I'm testing out. This is the Z-Pax Duplex tent. And this thing is really hunkered down right now. And that's because the winds can be rather strong up here. I went around the tent, staked it out, and I've also rock braced it. The flex poles allow you to really dial this in for your specific situation. Because it's windy here, we don't really want it to be too high, too high of a profile. We wanted it lower. You can see how I have the poles. So this thing's pretty rock solid. It does need to be adjusted just a little bit, but psh, I'm not going to worry about it right now. <laughs> I'm tired. We may not be alone, here at Perica Lake. We saw another couple come up. I think they're camping down at the lake. They're sheltered by the trees there. Watch out for them marmots. <laughs> yeah. Now when it comes to tomorrow, it's gonna be a heck of a trip to get over these passes. Check out the path to get over just this one. So we will pick it up right over here follow it as you can see it goes all the way over next to the snow keeps on going goes up goes over goes straight up diagonally underneath the snow all the way up and then it zigzags over and that is what gets you to the top oh it feels good to sit down i am done for the day and pass done. Yep, that's it. Tired. When it comes to my drink, what I have here is some bullet bourbon whiskey. I like this stuff. I know you do. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> I have bird dog hot cinnamon. Woo. Now that's got fire to it. You want to have a sip of this? No. I want to stay fire free. Fire free? Our love gives me enough fire. Yeah. Well, I shouldn't drink this because you're just too damn hot. <laughs> Whoa, guys, check him out. Okay, everybody. Well, what an awesome evening. There's a moose right over there. He's yeah. having dinner. We're about to have dinner. <laughs> if he comes over here, there's not much we could do besides just leave. <laughs> yeah. This is definitely his territory. True. Yeah, because you're not going to scare off a moose. No. no. The sun is going down behind the mountains now, and temperature is dropping it will get into the 30s maybe even low 30s we shall see obviously there's one of us who is colder than the other we'll leave that up to you to decide who is who <laughs>
pie. <laughs> We're gonna have dinner, everybody. Not talk too much tonight, especially considering we have our companion over here. We don't really want to uh, <laughs> bring him in. That's one of those things. Do you talk and make noise, or do you just be quiet? I think the in the middle is the right way to go. You can't be loud and intimidating because that doesn't work. Yeah. At the same time, if you're making noise, then he probably won't come over here. Or if you're making noise, he'll come explore. <laughs> he'll be curious. That was a big mosquito right there. This sure is a beautiful spot. I highly recommend that you all come out here and experience this for yourselves. The adventure will be what you want it to be. You can stay in the woods, you can come above the tree line, you can do some passes. There's alpine lakes, you can fish. You can go off trail if you're good with navigation and whatnot. There's plenty of options here. We're just hanging out. Yeah, we're not hiding from hiding a moose. from a moose or anything. <laughs> Even though uh, he's right next to our tent, basically. Yeah, we're just trying to give him space. Let him have his dinner. We just had ours. We'll just sit here. It's fine. Yep. This is his mountain after all, it's not his mountain. ours. <laughs> no. We'll stay over here as long as we have to. He did look at me, though. Yeah, he did. He doesn't really seem to care. There's a marmot over there. I hear it chirping. Oh, I want to see one. <laughs> Even though they're kind of just like groundhogs. Pretty much. You hear it? Chirp. Yeah. All we want to do is just brush up and go to bed. <laughs> we can't do that. We'll just hang out here. Yeah. I think there's two groups here now. And, um... Of course. I'm pretty sure they're just watching us <laughs> hang out with moose. <laughs> Susie wanted me to show her a moose. You got what you wanted. I and more. <laughs> That's how I roll. Ladies. That's how I roll. <laughs> <laughs> and I do appreciate yeah. it. You always get more with you me. You definitely spoil me. Yeah, I, get, I give you more. I think that's the point I want to drive home. I just give more. You do. You're such a giver. Oh, I did a want a moose. <laughs> I even made a comment, which I regret now. I said, I think I heard a moose snort, but I don't believe in moose because I've never seen one. Never seen anything in Colorado. I've been here three times in Colorado. Not here specifically, but... Three times, never seen anything more than like a chipmunk. Yeah, chipmunk, squirrel. The last trip we had, it was very pitiful, the wildlife we saw. Mm -hmm. So guys, we're about to turn in for bed, but we're not the only ones. The moose has decided to lay down and take a nap too. Susie, he's going to sleep. Like, the camera makes that look, what the hell is going on here? The camera makes him look like he's pretty far away. Uh, he's not. Well, he's going to bed, I'm going to bed. I can't take this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, how awesome is that? That's so cool. Well, everybody, day one, done. I'm super yeah. tired. Thank goodness, I'm really tired. Are my eyes red? They are a little. I'm tired, I've had like two hours of sleep in the last two days. I'm tired. I'm gonna sleep like a, like a baby log. How about a moose? <laughs> there, there's a moose. Right over there. Yeah. Moose. Guys, can you believe it? Mm. We set up camp, a moose came in, he ate until he got full, and then he laid down to go to sleep in our camp. And there's nothing we can do about it. He's like, God, I gotta sleep. I'm so tired. <laughs> oh, it's too early for the yawning in the video. Yawns only come in the morning, so I'm sorry. But I, I do have a question. Did I get you? I went at night and in the morning. <laughs> Everybody, good night. We'll see you all in the morning. We're getting up early. We gotta hit that pass. 
and get over that before the storms come. You can't take any chances up there. So it's up and over. Up and over. Up and over. So good night. Say good night, Susie. Good night. Good night, everybody. Everybody, six o'clock here at Parika Lake, and Susie and I were not alone. We've been sleeping with three moose, and I'm a little bit uncomfortable right now. One's munching away, our buddy who was here yesterday, and then there's two others who are staring at me. Oh, you know what? There's actually four. There's another one. Oh Susie and I, we slept good. What an incredible place to spend the night. Wow. It's unreal. It really is. Sun's coming up. We are going to have an easy breakfast. Some coffee. Then we are going to uh, get started on the pass. Today is the hard day. It's cold too. It's very cold, windy. Temperatures in the 30s, not exactly sure how, how low. No frost, it was really windy last night. Good morning, Susie. Good morning. What you doing? I am just getting ready, brushing out my hair. <laughs> How'd you sleep? I slept really good. You were out early. I was so tired. I think before like 8 o'clock. I was so tired. <laughs> yeah, I was super tired, but slept good. Ready for the day? Yeah, are you? Yeah, I'm ready. We got some work to do. Yeah, hard work. Hard work. <laughs> All right, well, it's time to get up, get at them. Try not to upset the moose. They've moved on a little bit, so they're not like staring right at us as we're inside of the camp here. That's a good thing. Every time I would move, they would all stop and look. So, it's pretty amazing. It really is. Well, today, we head up there. So as you all can see, the sun is up. Coffee is made. Susie is getting breakfast going. And it is getting hot. Hot already. Camp is broke down. We are about 15 minutes from heading over the first pass. Two passes today, both above the tree line. We definitely need to make some progress and go fast. There's clouds in the sky already. Everything's a little bit wispy, but it's definitely intensifying. We do have a plan in place if storms come while we're over the passes. We'll talk about that later. Ah, there's our moose friends. They moved on. They're over here now. That is so cool. Oh, he's so awesome. <laughs> With this backpacking trip and those moose, this may be one of the like most special moments I think I've ever had. Essentially, where we set up camp, a moose came in, he ate, he took a nap, brought in his friends. We all spent the night together. It was one of those situations of like, what do you do? There is no good answer. Yeah, that sun is so powerful. It's hurting my brain. How about you? Cheers, babe. Cheers, babe. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Cheers to the moose. Thanks for a good night. I still see them yeah, walking we're... back a little this way. I wonder why they would go up there. Seems like the grass would be really thin over there. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Uh, we were breaking down camp, and they were running around. They were, like, playing. They were chasing each other a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. 
That's pretty special. This morning we have some muffins and we have some trail butter. And we have two different types. We have dark chocolate and coffee nut butter blend. And then we have, uh, let's see, original trail mix nut butter. Let's try this, everyone. I'll take the flat. Look how smushed they got in the bag. <laughs> it's a pancake. <laughs> so here's my little muffin with the uh, chocolate peanut butter. Oh, man, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. I do have this vague memory of you telling me, like, husband, please smash the hell out of those things and make them flat for me. And I was like, okay, I'll do that. Such a good listener. <laughs> Such a good memory. What you do is you take a muffin, you cover it in your chocolate peanut butter, throw it in, follow with a coffee chaser. Mmm. 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 Susie, what an amazing place. Absolutely. Just unreal. We're just standing here taking it all in before we start the, the pass trail. It's just beautiful, and we've gotten solitude, so I feel very lucky. Colorado is not known for solitude, but we found it with this trip so far. <laughs> I expect to hike like half a mile an hour on this. Not only because it's steep, but we'll be stopping, looking all over. Summoning mountains like this, oftentimes you'll be on what many people refer to as the nice edge. On one side, you can walk it just fine. On the other side, if you go over, you get hurt. Think of it as running your finger across the knife's edge. If you go like this, it'll cut you. So when you're going up the mountain, lean to the side where you're not going to get hurt, away from the knife's edge as you're hiking. You won't have any problems. Susie, you are doing such a great job. Thank you. She is rocking this. Go, Susie, go. <laughs> that makes me feel so sick. <sighs> Can't wait to get to the top and get off of this. Ugh. And here we go. Let's go over the top. Wow. Wow. Was it worth it? Yes. Come on up, Susie. Okay. Oh my god. <laughs> oh. How about that? Yes, pass number one complete. Oh yeah, check out where we came from. So the trail went this way, and then over here somewhere, and then picks up down here, and goes all the way down and around. We camped right there in the center of the screen. Whew. Oh, it's even better on this side, babe. Oh, God. Whoa. <laughs> oh. Whew. Oh, my 
If I'm not mistaken, folks, the trail goes over here and then up and over the saddle. <laughs> He's like guardian of the mountain, isn't he? He is. So it is straight down off of this mountain here. Now, don't come over here. Stay away. Hello, Guardian. Permission to pass. Thank you. This is just unreal. Like this side of the mountain range is just so different. It is totally different. Yep. It's really, and really pretty. It's quiet. And the thing is, guys, remember you can disperse camp, so I mean there's just limitless possibilities here. Definitely consider this place if you're looking for solitude and for a really big variety. Now, as far as tracks go here, <laughs> there's only ours and moose tracks, that's it. Apparently the moose use this trail as well, and I don't blame them. Now, earlier this morning, I spoke about being above the tree line. Now, on this side of the trail, our plan is to head down into the woods if a storm comes. Luckily, that doesn't seem likely today, or right now at least. This has probably been the most amazing backpacking trip I've ever had. It's definitely been for me. Mm-hmm. That's some sweet hat hair there, Luke. What do you think, new look? Mm. Flattened down. Better? Let's make it stand up. <laughs> there you go. It's like rooster hair. <laughs> <laughs> So, oh, we came from all the way over here. Now, when it comes to water, so far on this trail, there's been at no point where you need to carry more than two liters. As far as this loop goes, that stands unless we say something else different. If we come through a dry patch, a dry section, we'll let you know, but otherwise, lots of water. Yeah. You do not need to carry much. You guys can see we will zigzag up that mountain and it's about to be here. We're getting very close to starting it. It's about go time. Yeah. Also, that's the second pass, so that means once we get over that, then down, and we'll get back into the tree. So if any storm should appear, then we're good to go. So just came across a second bear track. You can see the pad right here, claws up here. I came across a track back there, it was a partial, and a pile of poop, which I suspected to be black bear. It's steep. It's steep. So this is level, and this is where we are going. 
<laughs> cub track. Mama bears out here with her cubs. <laughs> that is so awesome. It should be said that there are marmots all over this place. They're huge. One was the equivalent of a good sized dog, I swear. Well, you really can't tell on camera, this is super steep. Well, Susie, we're basically going back into the tree line. I will miss those incredible views though. They have made this trip worthwhile. Just unbelievable. Definitely. Our destination for today is Bowen Lake. Supposedly that is very, very secluded. We shall see, of course. There's a ton of moose rub all over this place. We just have to be careful, that's all. So Susie and I were still heading up to Bowen Lake. It's been a heck of a push. Started off going downhill, then it was gradual uphill, and it's been steep for quite a while. If you decide to come this way, I promise you, it will be one of the longest mile and a half of your life. <laughs> but I see a sign right up there. You do? Yep, but we're at the lake. We made it, Susie. Yeah. Good Lord, that's beautiful. Wow. Susie and I have made it to Bowen Lake. It is absolutely gorgeous. We have selected our camp. And as of right now, there's nobody else out here. It's just Susie and I. I set up the hammock, gathered some water. Susie's making coffee. Oh, that was hard getting up here. It was very strenuous. But also, I was hitting my wall for the day because we've been hiking like four hours straight with only, you know, just a small break here and there. But I am so glad to be here. So glad. <laughs> so we have a fire pit over here and we can put the tent up anywhere that we'd like. Whew. I'm going to try out the hint just for a second. Yeah, try it out. Oh, man. Whew. That feels good. I am so glad that Susie decided to bring the hammock. The truth is, I don't like sleeping in hammocks all that much. I'd much rather use a tent any day, any day. But lounging in a hammock is special. It's awesome. <laughs> it's kind of what you need because it takes the stress off of your back after carrying your pack all day. Right. Here in a little bit, everyone, I'll take you down to the lake, show you around. It's gorgeous down there. It's full of fish. Also, I want to explore this area. I'm pretty sure I saw a very secluded campsite 
back there that looks awesome looks awesome so we will check that out just in case any of you all come out here you may want to take it check out those mountains isn't that something <laughs> nice place to sit Whew. now this is an awesome spot don't get me wrong the negative is that this would be very marshy if it was to rain. It would be a mud hole, in other words. Cheers, honey bear. Thank Cheers. you very much for lunch and munch. Susie, you've done an amazing job on this trek. This hasn't been easy. This is a strenuous hike. It is strenuous, mm -hmm. yeah. I would rate this as hard, as <laughs> difficult. It's hard. So tonight, the tent has been set up in its regular fashion. It is not in storm mode. You know, last night this thing was really hunkered down low. This time, much higher, lots more space. And with that job being completed, it is time for Susie and I to kick back and relax. We are done. We are done. So Susie, what do we find? <laughs> well, again, Luke likes to pick the places where the moose surround us. I deliver more. So I was gonna go pee, but there's a huge moose down there not just one Who at least there? two huge moose down here yeah <sighs> check these guys out i'm just gonna walk around the corner and zoom in i got my zoom lens on here wow now take a look over here in the woods he's laying down right there huge moose and then check over here We have another one right there in the woods. Wow. Wow, that is just so cool. So, we were just laying in the hammock and started hearing some pitter-patter on the tent. And that's because it's actually starting to rain. I was thinking these clouds were looking a little bit dark, but it doesn't look like a thunderstorm or anything's going to move in. Very scattered. The sun is about to go down behind the mountains. It's been raining on and off very lightly, but it's been a nice evening. It really it? has been, yeah. <laughs> Susie and I, we've been taking it easy. We went down to the lake, had a couple of drinks. That was fun, just watching the fish hop out of the water. I tell you, this trip has been so incredible. I've loved every moment of it. If we had done the four pass loop, I think we would have been disappointed in really the way of just the amount of people that would have been there. And that's the biggest complaint that I've heard about the four pass loop is that like there's an unpleasant feeling about it because there's so many people and the spots are limited, the nice spots. So you really have to get up early. Some people get up before the sun even comes up to hike it so they can get those spots. So it's almost like a race. and. That's not very fun, really. To me, it doesn't sound fun. And I mean, we talk about the people a lot and it may be because of where we're from. We are very lucky, almost spoiled, you could say, is that you can run off and you can do all these different trails and you won't run into people. Our first trip to Colorado was, was shocking, even though we enjoyed our trip, it worked out great, but it was shocking to us. It was something that we had never experienced before. People hiking single file. Yeah. 20, 30 at a time. What has made this trip so special is that we've been able to have time. You know, I think 
Luckily, we were able to get up early every morning, start our hiking early. We've enjoyed our afternoons, and it's just been really low-key. It's actually kind of funny. Yeah. The people who are camping here are the same people that we camped with at Preka Lake. Right. <laughs> and there's enough space that we can all spread out and have our solitude, mm -hmm. and it's really excellent. So I know a lot of today, Luke and I have spent talking about the Four Pass Loop. Is that something that we still want to do? They are going to implement a permit system and they probably have no choice about it. We saw a video of like some, I guess it's like an alternate way to access the four pass loop. And it was cars for miles on the side of the road. Yeah. Insane. For Insane. miles. Yeah. For miles. That's not fun to me. That's not something that I want to do. I think this is a good enough alternative yeah. to skip it. Maybe do it when the permit system is actually implemented because like yeah, it's ridiculous. The permit system may help you be able to find that solitude. You know, it's it would be so stressful to feel like you have to race to even find a camp spot. Yeah. I mean, it's, it just sounds ridiculous to me, really. Well, everybody, it's getting late. Susie and I have just been hunkered down inside of the tent. It's been raining a little bit off and on. I'm sleepy. Susie's sleepy. Yeah. Last night she fell asleep like that. Didn't even say goodnight, just like straight to sleep. I don't even think it was eight o'clock yet. I'm so sleepy. <laughs> Good night. Good night. <laughs> Everybody, we'll see you all in the morning. See you in the morning. Good night. Good night. Good morning, everybody. It's about 6.20 in the morning. I'm awake. Susie's going to lay down for a little bit longer. It's just me and the mosquitoes right now. I figure I'll walk around a little bit. See if I can't find some moose. <laughs> I don't see them over here where they were sleeping next to our tent yesterday. I slept great last night. It's a pretty good night. It was storming somewhere, somewhere far off, but the sky was flashing pretty good. And that made it pretty. Plus, thanks to the tent, which is semi-translucent, you can see right through it. You can see the sky, see the stars. That's awesome. What an amazing place to wake up to. I think I'll head down to the lake, but before I do, I need to check on my bear bag. For this adventure, we're using a Yursac. And so far, so good. The last weather report that I saw said that today there was a good chance of storms and right now there's a, quite a few clouds up in the sky maybe by noon by two we'll have some action hopefully we'll be on our way out of here i'd love to get caught in a good hailstorm that would be awesome the lake here is beautiful fish hopping out everywhere i've only seen small fish but the lake is full This is a special blend of Trader Joe's and Taster's Nasty. And it is hot. Guaranteed to put hair on your face, even if you're a woman, you'll run up mountains. You'll jump super high. <laughs> and there are other slightly negative side effects, but we don't need to talk about those. <laughs> what are you laughing at? <laughs> The biggest problem is a loss of time. All of a sudden, you'll just be gone for a couple of hours. No idea what you've been doing. I don't think I fell asleep, but I did lose a little bit of time.
Here you go, love. Thank you. Good morning, Susie. Good morning. Say hi to the camera. Hi. Good morning, guys. I am up and out of the tent, and I'm now gonna have a second cup of coffee. She is up and at them. Up and at them. <laughs> <laughs> How'd you sleep last night, Susie? Slept great. Ready for a good day? I am ready. I am too. I was stretching inside my sleeping bag and uh, realized how sore my calves are. It's funny. <laughs> Still getting acclimated to like the, the thinness of the air. It's funny, I could go walking and even like the smallest little hill will get me winded. Yeah. <laughs> Just huff and puff. It's definitely thin. So your pack's going to be really light today. Oh yeah, today it is. we ate almost all of our food. We have some dessert left, which I don't think anybody's going to eat right now. Not now, even though Luke did wake up and say, I think I'm going to make you cheesecake. And I was <laughs> like, oh. I know what ladies like. More. More dessert. More moose. I more could, coffee. I could feed you an oatmeal pie. That actually doesn't sound bad. Yeah, he would eat it right now. <laughs> now, when it comes to this hike, everybody, I do have some information about it that I wrote down. So if you're interested in coming out here. So the Never Summer Wilderness is 21,090 acres. This is a 19.9 mile loop, which I feel may be off. I'm not sure if I trust those measurements. Everybody has stated that somewhat differently, and I have a feeling that everyone's wrong. I agree. Yep. The ascent is 4,483 feet. The highest point is 12,113 feet. Bowen Lake, we are at 11,019 feet. The low at the parking lot is 8,844 feet. The average grade is five degrees or 9%. The max grade, 41%. 23 degrees and boy <laughs> you could tell when you're going up one of those passes there yeah <laughs> so how do you pronounce the the indians that were here the uh, arapaho arapaho indians mm -hmm. yeah so they used to call it never no summer which is like a double negative so the u.s department of interiors they actually changed the name to never summer because it's confusing never no summer yeah nobody understood what it meant but essentially, it's always cool here. There, there's always snow, and there's always strong storms. Yep. Before it was officially called Never Summer, it was known as the Rabbit Ear Range. And that's funny, I haven't seen a single rabbit. Have you? No. Now, if you're interested in coming here, we are roughly two hours from Denver. Yes. So it's not, it's not a bad drive at all. Plus, flying into Denver is really easy. You don't actually go into the heart of Denver. The Denver airport is outside of the city, kind of off on its own. Mm -hmm. And that blue horse with the glowing red eyes is bizarre. Yeah, Maybe, what does that mean? I don't know. To look it up. That airport used to have like the craziest like paintings on the walls of like nuclear bombs going off and like yeah. people dying. It was really bizarre. I think they painted over all that. I don't think there's a better spot in the entire world than this right here to have your breakfast. Uh -uh. No way. <laughs> Now, when it comes to elevation, I'd say for this trip, it's been very smooth. No elevation sickness or anything like that. 
No, we've been doing great. Yeah. I, I noticed like a time or two, it'd be like the air's thin, my head's pounding just a little bit. But mm -hmm. for the most part, it's been really smooth. It's funny, like we've met numerous people from outside of Colorado and like sometimes they're doing great or sometimes they're a little bit off. We met a couple down here who actually uh, camped out at the lake and we were talking and I asked him like, yeah, have you seen any moose? Because I didn't realize that they actually camped out this at Parika Lake with us. And they're like, no, but I saw a moose. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, ah, elevation. <laughs> yeah, we also met a couple that they were leaving Parika Lake and we asked them like, you know, how long they had been there. And actually they had only been there a few hours and they said they had to leave because they weren't acclimated. Mm -hmm. So they were having to, to bail. I guess they were feeling so bad. And that is the right thing to do. If you mm -hmm. are feeling very odd, if you are talking oddly, getting a headache, feeling nauseous, you do need to drop your elevation. So you need to head back down. Mm -hmm till you start feeling normal because it can go from mild to moderate to worse if um, if you do get elevation sickness. That's a good point. Like if, if you notice that one of your buddies is talking funny, just like it doesn't make sense what they're saying, it's time to stop and yeah. like maybe spend an hour just chilling, you know, mm -hmm. let them drink a bunch of water, eat something. You don't have to bail immediately, just pay attention to the warning signs. Are you ready to get out of here? I am ready. I'm kind of sad too at the same time. Me too. I could do another day. Absolutely. If we had more time, I'd like to go back over the passes and camp in between them. Oh, that'd be awesome. Yeah, because that was beautiful, everyone. Yeah. Well, we are done, packed up, ready to rock and roll. We may be the last ones out of here, I don't know. The other folks, they're gone. Well, we plan to have a slower morning. Yeah. So the way that the usually backpacking trips go is day one is kind of tough and you're trying to find your hiking legs and you're really tired. Day two, you're pumped, you're doing it, you're feeling great. And then day three, you're even more pumped. Now talking about moose here for a second. We're pretty sure they came back last night over here. They walked past our tent. We noticed that the ground is wet. Looks like moose track. And also there's fresh poop <laughs> not far from our tent, still wet. So we're back onto the main trail now. That was a quick mile and a half downhill. <laughs> it's amazing how long it takes to get to the top. Now, if you guys plan on going up to Bowen Lake, keep in mind that it is pretty strenuous up there. So far, the morning is going great. No people on the trail, no animals either so far. Just Susie and I enjoying our last day here. For the most part, everyone, that pretty much wraps up our adventure. I will, of course, keep filming as we go along here. But the big sights, the big moments are pretty much over, I'm sure. All in all, what an incredible trail, huh? Absolutely. Beautiful. Wow. Amazing. You want to push that thing over, don't you? No, I'm holding it. <laughs> Look at that. I'm doing my part. That's weird. That is what is holding this tree up.
Now, if you guys can see behind me here, getting dark and cloudy. In fact, this is a pretty dark cloud overhead of us. Looking kind of nasty. But so far, no rain. The clouds keeping the temps down. Feels good. This has been a very pleasant hike down from Bowen. It's a little slow going at times. It's still pretty rocky, but it's gorgeous. It really is. <laughs> that little bit of shade feels so good. So we just ran into some volunteers for the park service and these two ladies, they were very friendly and nice and they were asking us about our trip. But just the other day, they had a moose charge someone from a hundred yards. So that goes to tell you, you can never be too careful. With this video here, we had them right next to our tent two days in a row and we got lucky that they didn't charge or react. I think that really is the thing. We got lucky. Definitely lucky. I mean. One of the women, she said, it sounds like you guys have a lot of respect. And I said, absolutely. We respect nature, mother nature, the animals. This is their home and I'm so lucky to be able to come visit. But yeah, when I saw the moose coming in, they were definitely a little too close for my comfort level. And we definitely tried to give them space, but a hundred yards is like a football field. So it's like where we've been camping at and having the moose around. We basically just made a judgment call. I mean, we could have tried to pack up and move, but we would have been like right in their line of sight. So we just kind of hid out of sight, hopped in the tent, everything was fine. Be careful, be smart. That's it. When you come down the mountain, make sure to take that left at the sign there for Baker and Bowen trailhead. And essentially folks, we are almost back. Congratulations, Susie. We did it. <laughs> All said and done. All done. Without a doubt, this was epic in every single way. Just beautiful. We had solitude, the wildlife, which we were incredibly lucky with. It's very special in so many ways. And we hope you guys enjoyed it and enjoyed the views. This was just so amazing for us and so, so special. Yeah. Let's leave them with some advice. I would carry no more than two liters of water at a time. There's tons of water yeah, everywhere. No reason to. Nope. Uh, let's see what else. Bring a hammock. That was the best product, best piece of gear that we had with us the entire time. Yep. Give yourself time to relax in the afternoons, get your hiking done early, get over the passes, prepare for rain. Yes. And for storms. It's rained two days out of the three for us. Yeah. Yep and just enjoy it. It's a beautiful place. It really is. Everyone, take care, strength and honor. Bye. Bye. So guys, I'm sitting in Colorado outside of the Rocky Mountain National Park. I guess we're in the Rocky Mountains though. And I really, really wanted to see a moose and I definitely got what I asked for. But what you guys can't see was our tent. Our tent's right there. See the moose and see our tent. And moose are really dangerous, so you have to give them space. 